What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're back in Last Epoch talking about one of my favorite builds in this game. I've been rolling this build forever. I mean, what, it, what seems like forever, right? Um, this is a good starter build. It's a very strong starter build, and it's going to be able to get you through the story um, all the way through regular monoliths and into kind of empowered monoliths. You'll also be able to complete the dungeon and quite a few different things. Um, I don't think it's going to be very competitive on ladder or anything like that, but if you're just wanting to play the game or at least get started and start understanding and learning concepts, this is a really good starter build. Now, besides that, right, so take that, kind of scoot to the side. Throughout this video, um, there's going to be a game key for Last Epoch. It's going to be in three different parts. It's kind of like a little fun scavenger hunt. I want to do something a little bit different. And you take all three of those parts, put them together, boom, you got a free game key for the game. I'm going to be doing things like this throughout my other Last Epoch videos, as well as some upcoming Kill Squad videos. So if you're looking for some free games there, then feel free to watch the video kind of figure out where those different keys are, and then you can redeem them and get yourself a free game. So, okay, back to the actual build itself. We're gonna go through this pretty quickly. I'll have a Last Epoch's tools video for you, or link for you. That way you can go click on it. It'll have the build, all of that fun stuff. Just check the description below. So let's go ahead and let's start breaking down this character. So first off, we took the Sentinel. Now, for those of you who are new to Last Epoch, you have a little bit of a different kind of mentality here. We have a base class and we have masteries, and these masteries will give us something different. For this build, we're taking the Paladin because one, I really love Paladins and I decided just to go with this one. So there really isn't any more forethought than that. I was like, Paladin sounds cool. I like this Sigils of Hope and I like this Judgment ability. So I'm going to go ahead and go that direction. So really no more thought than that. Um, we're kind of breaking this down, we have our Sentinel base class. When you very first start the game and you pick your Sentinel, this is the tree that you'll have access to. You will not have access to these three down here. So let's go ahead and just we're going to run through these nodes really quick. So I went six of eight into Juggernaut for strength, fire resistance, and void resistance. Resistances are important. Strength is going to give me some extra damage. That's one thing to keep in mind about Last Epoch is you need to balance DPS with survivability. You can't go all survivability because it'll take you forever to kill things. Forever. Listen to me, it'll take you forever to kill things. You need to have a good balance of strength and survivability. If you go all DPS, you're going to be a glass cannon. This isn't as bad as Path of Exile where you'll die to things off screen, but you will die to things off screen occasionally. So being able to kind of balance these things out is going to be very important. Another kind of pro tip, um, hold alt. I know it, it says it right there, but people often skip that or they miss it. Hold alt for more information. This is really important. So each point of strength increases armor by 4% and improves skills that scale with strength, such as Warpath and Rive. So if you're ever in doubt of what a node does or what a particular stat does, typically you can hold alt for more info. If not, there is a really good game guide by pressing escape, clicking on game guide. This thing has a ton of stuff in it. You know, especially ailments. It's a question that people always ask. Like, oh man, how do bleeds work? How does chill work? How does damned work? Electrify? What is all of this stuff? All of these things are out here in the game guide. There's even a search bar at the top. Feel free to utilize that. Back to the skill tree. So we take five out of eight into fearless. Um, one, we want some vitality and increased health regen. Vitality gives us 10 uh, points of health and increases our health regen by 2%. Then we take 10 Relentless to increase our damage and our stun avoidance. Now, as you take these points up here, this kind of has a Grim Dawn effect on it. As you take these points down or up here, things start to unlock down here. Every five levels, you're gonna unlock a skill on this base tree. And this yellow bar will show you how many points you've invested into this particular tree. So I have 21 points, so I've unlocked all of our skills. And that's a key thing to kind of remember too, is you need 20 points minimum in your base class in order to put points into your masteries. And that also counts when you're like a level 100. If you don't keep 20 points into your base class, then you can't use your masteries. So make sure to do that and just kind of keep that in mind. You can't take everything out of your base class and throw it into your mastery, it just won't work. So we jumped into Paladin. Now we took Paladin, which means we have a mastery skill. Our mastery skill is down here, the Holy Aura. So Holy Aura is a really cool one. It has a passive ability and it has an active ability. So the passive ability is going to give us 30% increased damage and 15% elemental resistance, just passive. It just sits there and just gives that to us. 
If we activate Holy Aura, it doubles both of those for four seconds and then goes on a 10 second cooldown. When it's on your 10 second cooldown, you will not get the passive benefits or the active benefits. But once it comes off that cooldown, you get your passive ones back. And this also affects you and your allies. Now, the cool thing is your allies counts like minions, things like that, but it also will count towards other players when they introduce multiplayer. So this isn't just a class devoted just to you. You're also going to be in a very giving mood as a paladin. You'll be able to heal people, give them buffs, all that fun stuff. So that mastery skill just comes borderline or baseline rather. Now, if we jump into the paladin tree, we have a lot of investment here. We have 79 total points in this tree. So we have eight out of eight into conviction and it's very easy to see why we get increased physical damage fire damage lightning damage we get physical pin fire pin lightning pin very difficult to argue against those because uh, damage and penetration and i mean who doesn't love penetration so that's gonna you know help you out in the long run then we also have defiance right four points of attunement 12% elemental resistance, which is good because that's fire, ice, lightning, all resists. And you're going to be running to those quite a bit. So resistance helps because again, we're balancing things. Now, a lot of you, if this is your first time seeing last epoch are probably like, what's attunement? That's a strange stat. That isn't like intelligence or strength. Again, hold alt. Each point of attunement grants two mana and then improves skills that rely on innate magic inside you and your surroundings. It's inside you, Atreyu. You got it, buddy. Just kidding, uh, such as Smite and Judgment. So this is just a glorified stat, um, just something that sounds interesting. But if we look at our skills down here at the bottom, we'll be going into these, so don't don't try to write all these down yet. Um, we can see at the bottom it says scaling tags. We have attunement, attunement, not attunement, not attunement, not attunement. So Smite and Judgment both scale off of attunement, whereas Warpath, our spin to win here does not so we'll talk about that here in a minute but we have attunement which is good that's going to help things in our second row we have phoenix strike this is going to give our melee attacks a chance to ignite on hit now when you ignite something it causes them to take damage over time fire damage over time actually and this is a big question that i get asked all the time and i say i but in the game and I'm part of chat, so I guess me too. But anyway, melee ignite chance, a plus 120%. Now people are like, how many, what is that? Like how many stacks is that? And um, breaking this down, it's very simple. When you have a melee ignite chance of plus 100%, that means every hit will apply a stack of ignite. Very simple, 100% equals one, 200% equals two per hit, 300% three per hit. If you have something that's odd, let's say like 120%, that's just not, you know, a flat, well-rounded number, then you're going to have a 100% chance to apply one stack. So you will apply one stack and then a 20% chance to apply a second stack. So you're going to get a guaranteed one and maybe a second one off of one hit. That's how that works. So there's some people that stack all their chances up quite a bit, like 900%. So each hit gives you nine stacks. It's insane. And there's a very high cap when it comes to stacking chances. So don't feel like, oh man, I stacked a 10 and that's it. People are like stacking these a ton. So melee ignite, ignite chance just in general, very, very, very core to this build. So get used to seeing ignite chance and melee ignite chance. Then we have divine bolt. Okay, so whenever you hit an enemy with a melee attack, which counts for warpath or spin to win, you have a 20% chance to cast Divine Bolt. This is a bolt that just like flies off. Like imagine like a splinter or a shard that just shoots off and hits a random enemy. There's one random enemy, that's it. I like this because one, it deals fire damage and two, it has a chance to ignite because, uh, because it deals fire damage. So let's go ahead and keep things rolling. We have Valor. It's gonna increase our health and our healing effectiveness. Again, hold Alt. Healing effectiveness increases the health restored by healing skills only. Now, we'll get into this in a moment, but this also gives us a DPS boost to Judgment. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So in the third row, we have nothing. And in the fourth row, we have Raya's Strength. Praise the light. You have additional strength and you deal increased fire damage if you've hit an enemy with a melee attack recently, it lasts four seconds. Again, strength and increased fire damage, which is different than Ignite Chance on a recent melee hit. So anything with the fire tag is going to get increased damage, whether that is a burn, whether that is my warpath that I've switched over to fire, whether it's smite or judgment. 
Anything that has the fire tag will get a damage boost. Then I took Shared Divinity. This is actually going to cause two Divine Bolts to fly off and hit an enemy. So when I hit something, it has that, you know, 20% chance to fly off and shoot, shoot a Divine Bolt. This is going to give us two Divine Bolts. But the problem is it also reduces the chance to cast on hit. So instead of 20%, we're looking at 10%, which is fine. I think that's a good trade-off. I tried to do more, right? I went five out of five on this and it just didn't work out very well. So I feel like one out of five is a good kind of happy medium. But if you really don't want Divine Bolts, take both of these points out and throw them somewhere else. You could throw them into Prayer, which we'll talk about here in a second. You could throw them into Defiance for some extra attunement. There's a lot you could really do here. Then next up, we have Holy Symbol. So Holy Symbol is going to give us increased healing effectiveness, necrotic resistance, and health. So all survivability stuff, which is really good. Then over here, we have Prayer. We just mentioned this one. So this one's a pretty interesting one. You're going to get increased damage and healing effectiveness. Effectiveness. If you've healed yourself or an ally in the last four seconds. Now, the cool thing here is Smite, which is something that we'll be talking about quite a bit, but it casts all of the time, will heal you if you're near it when it hits the ground. And that's a heal, which increases your damage and your healing uh, effectiveness. Judgment will also heal you. So if you use Judgment and you're around when it uh, erupts and heals everything near it, then you will also proc Prayer and you'll get extra damage. So I didn't go too deep into this one, just three out of 10. I feel like that's again, a happy medium, um, but you could either go all in or all out on this one. It really doesn't have a huge effect, but this did help me get across a couple timelines, um, especially when I needed to judgment bosses over and over again in order to kind of DPS them down. Next up, we have Dedication. Again, some more attunement and increased mana regeneration. Nothing in this row, nothing in this row. And then we jump into Righteous Firebrand. You're gonna deal additional fire damage with melee attacks if you've cast a spell recently. Here is the cool stuff. We'll talk about this in a second, but there's a difference between casting a spell and directly casting a spell. So if we go over here to Sword of Raie, you can see your melee attacks have an additional chance to ignite enemies if you've directly casted a spell recently. Okay, there's a difference. So if I press W to cast Judgment, boom, hits the ground, it does its thing, it blows up, that's a direct cast of a spell. If I am whirlwinding like this and smite auto procs and casts, that is casting a spell. So there's a difference. Direct casts, when you use judgment and you hit the ground, it's you pressing a button. This being procced and hitting something is casting a spell. So I want to make sure we kind of go through and delineate those two because there is a difference. So with Righteous Fire Branch, we're getting additional fire damage with melee attacks um, if we've cast a spell recently. So this is just kind of cyclical. You're going to be able to use Warpath and then Warpath is going to cast Smite, which is then going to increase your fire melee damage, which is Warpath. You can see the scaling tags at the bottom, fire and melee, which will cause you to deal more damage with Warpath. So as you cast spells, you're going to be basically be buffing the thing you're going to be using. So it's amazing. It's self-reciprocating and I love it. Okay, so we have Reverence of Duality. Just like our Conviction over here, it's really hard to argue against this one. Increased health, damage, healing effectiveness, and mana. Kind of a no-brainer. And the last one we have is Light of Raya. Increased fire damage, lightning damage, movement speed. Can't really argue those. Okay, so that's the Paladin Tree. Let's jump into um, our skills, and we'll talk about those a little bit. I do not have Forge Guard or Void Knight filled out at all. Maybe down the road. Um, right now, I am a level 87, so I have at least 13 points left by the time I get to level 100, and then I could go back and do some side quests and maybe get some more points. So right now, I have at least 13 points I'll be able to put somewhere to make this build even better. Okay, so I said we talk about skills next. So let's talk about those. If this is your first time in Last Epoch, let me give you kind of a quick and dirty on how skills work in this game. So again, we have our Sentinel, right? Base. Every Sentinel will have this. Doesn't matter what mastery you are, you get access to these skills right here. Okay, these ones are baseline. You just get these as you level up and stuff. And these ones down here, are gonna unlock as you spend points into the passive tree at the very beginning. So these ones will always be there. 
These ones over here on the right, these are your masteries. Because I am a paladin, there are certain things I cannot get. I can't get forge strike, I can't get erasing strike. Those are mastery skills. If I jump over to forge guard, I can unlock shield throw, manifest armor. If I jump over to void knight, I got volatile reversal, abyssal echoes, and devouring orb, but I cannot unlock anomaly. Same thing over here with Ring of Shields and Smelter's Wrath. So there are some things you cannot get, but you can go through and you can kind of touch on a few other things. You can round out a build if you would like to. Okay, so here's what makes Last Epoch pretty unique compared to other action RPGs, hack and slash games, however you want to kind of approach this. There is a specialization system for each skill. So up here at the top, you see my five skills that are in these um, little slots here. And each one of these has their own skill tree. And this is something that immediately drew me into Last Epoch. I was like, whoa, sold. So much customization. Absolutely love it. So all of these different trees will change how these abilities work. So for instance, Warpath, our typical good old fashioned spin to win. Woo. You can see that our spin to win also leaves a fire trail behind us. That is all specializations. It's right down here, Path of Fire. So we're going to go through and we're going to kind of break these down a little bit. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into all the different design choices just because this video will end up being an hour long. I know that because I filmed this video earlier and it ended up being an hour and 10 minutes um, because I talked too much. So let's go ahead and we'll roll through this and I'll kind of talk a little bit about the different nodes. So we got Warpath. The first thing you want to do on Warpath, if you take this as a starter build from level one, um, take Unchained. Take, un take every single point you have at first and put it into Unchained. Don't go anywhere else. Put it into Unchained because if you do not, you're going to really struggle on mana very early on. This is going to reduce your mana cost by 10. Because if we look at it right now, my mana cost is 1. And check this out. I cast it. Look at my mana. The blue orb in the bottom right. Does not go down. I'm channeling this for free. And I can just hold it forever. And I'll just slice through stuff, carve it up no mana no issues that's why you take unchained first and that's why you want to manage your mana so let's go ahead let's go back in here so we go there and the next thing i would probably do is start heading down this direction so we're going to take quicksilver wind increase movement speed always good gore bringer this is going to cause your war bringer to have or war path rather to have a chance to cause enemies to bleed we immediately flip that into earth scorcher which is going to cause that bleed chance to flip into ignite chance because we want fire damage ignite chance all of that stuff instead of bleeds then we take path of fire we're going to leave a burning trail behind us i just showed that off every second that an enemy is in that burning trail it's going to apply a stack of ignite which is incredibly powerful because as you're rolling through enemies and you're cutting them up you, let's say you don't kill them right doesn't matter they're going to chase you and they're going to be in your burning trail the entire time just gathering stacks of ignite that's going to continue to chew through their health and burn them into the ground so being able to take this is very powerful early on. And as you go through monos and you're not exactly trying to full clear every single map, this is going to help pick up kind of the stragglers as you roll through them. Then we take Path of Heavens. This is going to give us additional spell damage. You'll probably wonder why. You're like, why are we doing spell damage on a physical damage skill? I'll tell you in a second. Then we have Arsenal of Flame. Warpath is going to deal more melee fire damage to ignited enemies. So as you're catching enemies on fire, you're going to increase your damage done to those enemies. So it just it gets, goes downhill so quickly for things that get caught on fire with this build, and I love it. Okay. So we talked about Path of Heavens and the adaptive spell damage. Let's talk about Winds of Justice. Winds of Justice will allow us to cast Smite each second a chance to cast Smite each second at a nearby enemy. Two out of four gives me a 50% chance. The problem here is it will consume Smite's mana cost. So you can't do this forever. You cannot do it for eternity. It just will not work unless we'll talk about a loophole. But for now, Winds of Justice is going to cast Smite and it's also going to pull everything that Smite has in its skill tree. And this is the really powerful part. And a lot of the skills do this. This isn't just a Paladin or a Sentinel type thing. Druid does this a lot. It plays really heavily off of each other. And I love, 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 love that. So um, Winds of Justice, we're dropping Smites down and it's amazing. So let's go ahead and let's head up to this side here and then we'll move on. So one, we do Iron Reach. We want Warpath to deal damage in a larger area. Then we have Whirling Steel. Warpath deals more damage. This is doubled if you're using a two-handed uh, weapon or dual wielding. So 32%. 
um, because we always go two-handers, always. Then we have Cyclone of War. So depending on what weapon you're using, you're gonna get an additional benefit. Global melee health leech with an ax, um, increased crit chance with a sword, physical pin with a mace, fire pin with a scepter. Not too big on the scepter, but it is what it is. So, and I realized I never told you about the adaptive spell damage. Um, this scales. So this increases the damage of smite. That's why it's important. Okay, so that's Warpath. We put two points in a Molten Path here to shred enemy armor. Not exactly a huge thing there. You can see by holding Alt, Armor Shred reduces armor by 100. You're dealing more physical damage when that happens. Let's go into Smite first, then we'll go back to Holy Aura because we just talked about Smite. So Smite is actually going to drop basically a bolt of fiery lightning down onto an enemy, and it's going to roast them. They're gonna get hit with some damage. Um, and they're going to heal anybody or any allies, including yourself, that are in that area. So it's both healing and damaging, which I really like. So first thing I did, Holy Fire, obviously. Smite hits have a chance to ignite enemies. We're just stacking that ignite chance. I went Conflagration to deal increased damage to ignited enemies. And then I went two out of two into Immolate for a chance to apply Spreading Flames. Spreading Flames is a really, really cool thing. It's going to deal fire damage, but then it's going to spread to enemies. So basically, it's just a wildfire that's going to roast everything if enemies are grouped tightly together. Then we jump up into Holy Wave. We're going to heal in a larger area. Always good. We're taking Soothing Balm. Being healed by Smite grants you increased health and mana regeneration for four seconds. Then we go Righteous Fury to increase our melee fire damage if we've hit something with Smite recently. Obviously, because we're proccing it, so it's going to be hitting things all the time. Then we're going Righteous Flurry to increase our melee and, ca and uh, cast speed if we've hit something with Smite as well. So again, really good stuff there. So right now we're pulling three mana cost. So Smite is going out, dropping three, you know, every now and then. So it's not exactly a heavy cost, but at the same time, you can't do it forever. Over on Warpath, if you're having a problem with mana, especially early on, go up here and grab Dark Nexus. While you're spinning, you're going to gain mana every three seconds while wielding a two-handed weapon. Every three seconds, you're going to gain seven mana. Now, most likely every three seconds, you'll cast maybe one smite. And if that happens, you're going to lose three. Let's say you get lucky and you cast two smite. That's six. And then your third second ticks and you get seven mana back, which allows you to top off again and stay pretty much spinning forever. So... Dark Nexus is really good, especially early on when you need to watch your mana costs. So jumping into Holy Aura, remember this is the one that passively increases our damage and gives us resistance, and then we can activate it to double all of those things. So this one, not too intense, but we'll go through and we'll talk about it a little bit. So we did Shelter from the Storm. This is gonna give us additional elemental resistance and endurance threshold. Endurance threshold basically builds on your effective health. So just think of it like that. Then we go five out of five to increase our on call of arms to increase our physical damage. We jump into fanaticism to increase our attack speed. Raye's devotion. Um, this is going to allow us to have a chance to ignite enemies. We go Raye's fury to do fire penetration. Then we go burning blows to increase our fire damage. And then we do flame burst. Every six melee hits will cause a flame burst, which is going to deal fire damage to enemies around that individual. If we proc Holy Aura, only three melee hits are required. However, we use Warpath. There is a fine print on this one. For example, Warpath hits only have a 60% chance to count towards the total required for triggering a Flame Burst. So, guess what? Because we hit things so quickly, it's going to take us a little bit longer, and we need to actually go out and do something different, um, or just kind of keep holding it down to activate a flame burst. So keep that in mind. Then we have improved flame burst. So if you're the one to get the final hit to unleash it, it deals significantly more damage. Again, this goes to like minions. It goes to allies, things like that. Okay, let's talk Sigils of Hope. So Sigils of Hope are pretty cool. They're basically just a little aura that kind of float around you. They're a buff. And they cause you and your allies attacks and spells to deal four additional fire damage and increase your health regeneration by 25%, stacking up to three times. Three times. So 12 additional fire damage and 75% increased health regen, which is crazy. And this has some really cool things kind of built into it that I really, really like. So first up, down here we have faith. 
If you take a hit that deals more than 25% of your health, instead it'll consume a sigil and heal you for 200 health. So this is great to just kind of, I'll say, soften the blow a little bit when it comes to heavy hitting attacks and spike damage. This was really important early on because you're gonna be squishy and enemies will, I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll whoop up on you. So being able to take faith is gonna be pretty good. We have iron sigils to give us additional armor. We have Enduring Hope to increase our Sigil's duration. We have Empowering Sigils, which is going to increase our damage. We have Decree of Flame, which is going to give us, again, additional fire damage. Burning Sign for a chance to ignite. Word of Power to increase our melee damage for three seconds after you cast Sigil's Hope, which we don't have to direct cast this. We'll actually be able to auto-proc it here in a second, I'll tell you. Um, Word of Alacrity, which is going to cause us to have increased cast speed and heals um, us on cast. So this is another thing, right? When this thing casts, we're healed, which will proc prayer, which will increase our damage by 21%. So remember that node we had back over here? Whenever you heal yourself, you get damage and, and healing effectiveness. So being able to jump in and um, automatically heal ourselves on proc is going to be incredibly important. Then we have last wish, this one right here in the middle. You have a chance to summon a sigil when you kill an enemy, a 6% chance. Not a huge chance, but enough, right? There's enough enemies, enough big mobs, and you're warpathing through them. You'll most likely get at least one sigil out of that. And the cool thing is, this will automatically summon a sigil, which will proc all of this stuff, which will heal you and give you increased cast speed, which will increase your melee damage for three seconds, which will then give you a chance to ignite enemies, which will then increase your fire damage, which will then increase your global damage. So all of these things play so well into each other. All you have to do is kill stuff. And that's super simple. Last, we have Judgment. So Judgment is a heavy hitting ability, and I've been kind of alluding to this one, right? So a very powerful melee attack that leaves an area of consecrated ground for four seconds. Allies in the Consecrated Ground are healed. Enemies on Consecrated Ground take fire damage over time that scales with spell damage. Consecrate gains one adaptive spell damage per 5% increased healing effectiveness. This is why healing effectiveness for the Paladin is actually a DPS stat as well because of Judgment. So if you go through and you stack up healing effectiveness, you're giving yourself increased spell damage, which will then increase the damage of judgment as well as the consecrated ground and the amount of damage that it will tick for. So this is one of those things. You're both increasing the healing, outgoing healing you're gonna to do to yourself and others while also increasing the damage you're going to do to enemies, especially bosses with judgment. That's why I love this build. That's why I really like this mastery and this spec. So let's go ahead and let's work off of this. So one, Consecrated Ground has increased healing effectiveness. Okay, so obviously DPS boost there. Then we go into Holy Eruption. So this is going to cause, at the end of Consecrated Ground, it's going to cause an eruption, which deals fire damage to all nearby allies or enemies, and then heals all nearby allies for 80 health. Then Cleansing Light, which is going to cause Holy Eruption to remove negative ailments from you, which is great. Then we have Destructive Impact, which causes Consecrated Grounds um, to affect a larger area. We have Ashes to Dust, which is going to cause Consecrated Ground to have a chance to reduce enemy armor each second. Again, very powerful for bosses because it'll slowly reduce their armor, which will allow you to do more damage to them. We have Holy Blast. Holy Eruption deals more damage and restores more health. Easy peasy. We have Sacred Sword. Judgment hits have a chance to ignite enemies, and ignites applied by Judgment have an increased effect. So they not only will ignite, but it'll cause those to tick for a higher amount of damage. Then we have Divine Destruction. Judgment hits and Consecrated Ground deal more damage against enemies with high health. And then Scourge Bane. This is going to deal extra damage to bosses and rare enemies. This is kind of our boss killer. And I'm not going to say it's going to deal a ton of damage, right? This isn't going to deal like way crazy amounts of damage compared to like the Rogue, for instance, and the Umbral Blades build that's currently out there. But this is going to be able to hold its own and help you out and heal you and all of that fun stuff. So, you know, it's not going to break any records or anything like that, but you're also not going to have a ton of issues clearing stuff because you're not going to be constantly worried about dying or positioning. 
you can face tank quite a bit with this build and judgment is a big reason why because after a few seconds you're gonna have an eruption it's gonna basically heal you back to full and then you have a four second cooldown so you can just kind of chain smash these things and that's just awesome so then we also have purifying flame judgment hits and consecrated ground deal more damage against ignited enemies again we have ignite like crazy so you might have some questions about these numbers up here right 20 is your maximum level for each skill and your specialized skill i have 21 22 20 21. the reason i have that is because i have an item that gives an additional point to that skill which we're going to talk about next so let's go ahead and jump over and let's talk about our items so if i go right here um to our relic you can see plus two to sigils of hope so that's going to give me an additional two specialization points to put into sigils of hope which is then going to make that skill even better so look for those on gear because those are very powerful you can even get plus four to certain things which is really cool to see so if i hold Control and alt i can see um the maximum ranges for it so you can see on this one tier five the range is two to two so you'll always get two to sigils of hope but like i said there's other gear other skills that'll actually give you more points which is really cool to see okay so let's talk gear again this is by far this is just a very unoptimized version of this right this has just been me kind of messing around with it and um i've been able to clear everything everything um on my way to empowered monoliths so feel free to take a little bit of this be be creative with it get free with it here's the big things look for melee fire damage look for fire damage look for health on kill or health on melee hit and then look for defensive stuff things like resistances health armor figure out where you're weak and then look for those stats or build towards those stats in terms of damage already talked about it right melee damage fire damage physical damage chance to ignite um, something like this increased elemental damage over time so all of those things are going to be very powerful and they're going to be very helpful so feel free to kind of keep that in mind so what i have right now is i have a um a winged helmet for the sentinel it gives me some armor critical strike avoidance i went strength attunement poison resist health then for my uh, chest plate i went increased physical damage fire damage physical resistance void resistance i went um i'm using a lance right now a spear so I was using an axe for a while because I really liked the leech and I was using a sword, but this one just rolled higher. So I've been using this right now. I'm looking for an axe or a sword again, because I really like the bonus I get um, from Cyclone of War in my Warpath tree. Anyway, melee fire damage, critical chance, health on kill and chance to ignite on hit. The uniques that I'm using again, wouldn't recommend these, but this is what we're using for now. 42% increased damage, fire damage over time, vitality, int, and then bleed chance flipped over to ignite chance because we want to stack that up like crazy um, siphon of anguish so we have elemental resistance as our innate kind of built-in affix melee damage leached as health leech rate movement speed doom so if you hold alt you can see what doom does so doom deals massive void damage over time and increases melee damage taken by four percent stacking up to four times then we went thorn slinger which actually gives us a plus one to all of our physical skills which is warpath which is judgment and i believe that's it yeah so just those two which is still good i mean that's 21 points um out of, out of 20 so we're good there and then i just got this heirloom of the last nomad mostly i needed the cold resistance void resistance is always great stun durations like meh i don't really care too much about the potion effects or anything like that but the increased fire damage is super nice there at the top then for my boots i just have solarium greaves again increased armor movement speed fire resistance too much fire resistance strength vitality increased health regeneration and physical resist and the last thing here we already talked about mana sigils of hope increased health regen but this last one here plus 19 percent to all resistances while channeling so if i hover over warpath I'm channeling this right here channel watch my resistances so I have 65 39 62 this one right here let me tell you poison is in a tough spot guess what boom not as tough as the spot as you thought not as tough as the spot you thought because guess what 
this plus 19 percent to all resistances while channeling is a game changer i am always channeling and by always channeling i'm able to cap out almost every single resistance at 75 percent which is i mean it's really hard to argue against that poison's the only thing i'm weak on and honestly i could probably throw a poison affix on something and make my life a lot better so that's my actual gear here let's talk idols so again idols very unoptimized but you're looking for fire damage you're looking for resistances ignite on hit um, damage over time is always good if you can find a good warpath area roll that's another good one to look at physical damage is okay i would go fire damage first and then physical damage if possible healing effectiveness remember that's a dps stat for the paladin so as long as you're using judgment take healing effectiveness to help yourself out then we also have plus four seconds to sigils of hope duration which is going to help um, keep those things up for a longer period of time 55 percent chance to shred armor on hit with fire skills which is again very important then we go bleed duration now remember bleed chance all that stuff is flipped into ignite chance because of these greaves that i have here or these gloves that i have here and then we also have some armor fire damage and then damage over time and then a junk poison damage stat so idols are very not even close to being optimized um i'm constantly looking for new ones as you can see i pick up like every single one i have my filter going and i just have terrible luck with these things i swear but anyway that's what we're looking at right here overall guys like i said this is a very easy to use build it's very approachable it's it's just one of those strong starter builds it's not overly complex that's the thing i really like about it you know is you can pick it up i can tell somebody hey vulcan you know i'm starting last epoch what should i play let me tell you take warpath flip it over to fire stack fire damage stack chance to ignite go paladin um basically throw throw these like few nodes in here and guess what you're gonna be rolling through stuff and just wiping things off the board like crazy so that's what we're looking at right now folks i hope this has been super helpful for you i hope this has helped you either get into last epoch or maybe give you something different to try um like i said it'll get you all through campaign all the way through regular monoliths all the way to empowered now i'm not really sure how it's going to work out there um, or on ladders i don't think it's gonna work out too well compared to some of the other builds but this one still a fun one to get out here and play as but um yeah and remember keep an eye out for the game code in this video let me know in the comment section below if you found it um, that way i can mark it off my list but anyway hope you guys enjoy the free game thank you so much for watching this has been vulcan and i'll talk to you next time